what is at stake? A win today gives Georgia Tech their second regional final appearance in the last three years. If Nebraska wins, look at this streak. They are seeking their 21st straight NCAA tournament home win. This is an incredible advantage to be able to play at home in Nebraska is exceptional here. Georgia Tech will serve first. It will be Bella D'Amico, one of two setters that the Yellow Jackets will use in their 6-2 offense. Lexi Rodriguez takes the first pass. They run the middle with Becca Alec. And I think that's a mistake. Why serve the best libero in the country to start the match? Textbook play, perfect pass, allows your setter to run all three options in that moment. Alec connects for a great swing. You know, it was interesting talking to Georgia Tech. We talked to Bianca Bertolino about playing in this environment. She said she'd seen it on TV many times before with a great kill on the overpass for Bain Moore. She said, I've seen it so many times, but to actually play in this venue in front of this crowd is going to be an unbelievable experience. How do you calm those nerves with so much at stake too, Holly? Well, you have to lock into what's happening in front of you in one play at a time and then just lock into your teammates and what the task at hand is. D'Amico will go to the outside, sets up Mendez. Morgan Riley backside, there's Merritt Beeson, number 13 in white. Mendez again, easy shot for Lexi Rodriguez to scoop up. And Becca Alec already with her second kill. Nice job there. Wasn't necessarily a perfect connection, but she's able just to get on it and throw down. She's got a lot of shots in her toolkit. Harper Murray, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. All of the freshmen for Nebraska arrived early. They came in January, and John Cook said that has made all the difference. There's a service here. Well, they were able to come in in January, play three months of beach volleyball with the program, get stronger in the weight room, and then get some indoor reps and get used to the program. They also were able to skip that senior year of club volleyball that beats a lot of athletes up. Paid off well. The only loss in the season is to Wisconsin for this Nebraska team. And there is Allie Batenhorst again. She has stepped into the spot of Lindsey Krause, who has not played since October 14th. Lindsey Krause, by the way, if you're, you're keeping track, she's close, not quite yep. there. She has to be able to go through her full practice. John Cook said she's got to be able to let it loose before we feel comfortable getting her back out on the court. She did warm up with the team today. Tamara Otene. Bergen Riley calling on Merritt Beeson again. Mendez on the right side. Batenhorst will take it. Dug up by Bertolino. Otene trying to turn it down the line, no touch. I expected a defensive battle. Both teams hold their opponents to well under 200. So I'm expecting a defensive battle today. Nebraska so far has had a lot of positive block touches slowing down Georgia Tech's offense. Yeah, I know we're all excited to see both of the back rows play on both of these teams. Here comes Otene going cross court to the corner. And Michelle Collier will tell you, look, we're a little bit undermatched when it comes to size, especially at the net from a blocking standpoint. She said for us to have an edge against a top team like Nebraska, we've got to play great backcourt defense to keep rallies alive. Liv Mogridge on the serve for the Yellow Jackets. Riley pushing it back to Batenhorst, tooling the Georgia Tech block. And you see freshman Harper Murray, 27 in white for Nebraska, handle that first contact perfectly. She carries such a big load, just as a freshman playing that six rotations. One of the many reasons she is the Big Ten <laughs> Freshman of the Year. Add it to the list. Beeson going after Otene. Otene looking to turn it, point Nebraska. Otene is trying to get the outside hand of the blocker, turning it down the line, but not finding the block before she turns it. They continue to serve Otene, trying to run the middle with DeAndre Pierce. Harper Murray flying out of the back row. Pimentel with the bump set to Otene, but it's long. A couple uncanny errors from Tamara Otene there on the outside. You often wonder, we mentioned the stage, the crowd, this atmosphere. A little bit of jitters here in the round of 16. You'd like for Georgia Tech to settle in, play error-free volleyball. Yeah, keep in mind they had to go on the road at Florida. So they've played on the road, not unfamiliar, but it is a lot of pressure in this round. 
I also think Nebraska's loading Tamara Otene up with a ton of responsibility, serving her every ball, making her find open court, and it's not easy against Nebraska's defense. Otene out of New Zealand does get that kill. And Eloisi Suarez, their second setter, number 13 in that Navy jersey, she subs in. Georgia Tech's setter will always be in the back row as they run a 6-2 offense. Morgan Riley to Bate Morst. Hardy mentioned that 6-2 offense that Georgia Tech's running. They run it out of necessity. Liv Mogridge went down in the middle of the season, their middle blocker with a knee injury. They had to go into that 6-2 rotation. When Mogridge came back, they actually were playing extremely well, so Michelle e. Collier stuck with it. And Coach Collier told us it kind of plays to all their strengths. It does, and they have obviously a bigger block, and they've got more arms in transition that can get swings if they can control that first contact. That goes outside of the antenna, so out of bounds, and a point for the Cornhuskers, who are up seven here in the opening set. And we talked about Nebraska's back row. Their defense is so good. They hold opponents to hitting only 140. That's third in the nation. That's impressive. And then Georgia Tech holds their opponents to 182. So both strong defensively. A dig by Beeson. Laney Choboy will set with her hands to Harper Murray. Does not get the touch. And it's a point for the Yellow Jackets. And now you look for Georgia Tech to be able to capitalize on an error from Nebraska. Can you go back with the serve if you're today and start to put together a couple of points, put together a run here? That was the first attacking error by the Cornhuskers. Otenay serves at Harper Murray. Merritt Beeson tipping out of the back row. Dug up by Georgia Tech. What a hustle by the Tech defense. You love a good pancake. Great tip by Beeson. But Eloise Suarez gets right underneath it. Give me some Aunt Jemima syrup, Court. <laughs> love a good pancake early in a match. Is that more adrenaline that Georgia Tech needs to climb back in? And the and Young goes long. It goes to Nebraska. Head coach Michelle e. Collier challenging that there was a touch on that last swing by Mon Young on the right side. So each team will get two challenges. If we go to a fifth set, you'll get an additional challenge. If you're correct in your challenge, you get to keep it. Original call was no touch. Not sure if I saw a touch there. Ooh. And I'm wondering Ooh. if you see it off of Jackson's right hand, yep. maybe that index finger, ring finger. Do you see it get bent back here? That you, angle for me looks like a little touch. Yep. And you're often looking for a redirection of the volleyball as well. Does it change its current path? Oh, you see a finger right there. This is a great look from our team. The second set of hands. Andy Jackson touched that ball. Do they see the same thing? Yes. But Michelle Collier is uh, sighing in relief because her challenges did not go so well on the road in Gainesville a weekend ago. She's successful in her first challenge of the day. So she'll get to keep it. Both teams with two challenges remaining. Georgia Tech right now hitting for negative numbers, 0 0.071. But they're on a 3-0 scoring run now after that change in the decision, and they've got a free ball to work with. Suarez pushing it out to Bianca Bertolino. Here comes Harper Murray, tags the back corner. Nebraska so good in the backcourt. Look at Cho Boy turn and chase that ball always. Full effort, she loves to make the big play and keeps Nebraska in it for the point. Laney Choboy and Lexi Rodriguez, they're their own highlight reel. They are. Nebraska has six points off of its 10 serves. Kennedy Orr has checked in to serve. Bertolino, wide. That time Georgia Tech isolating Bertolino on the left side. That's the look they want, but hitting air wide. Yeah, great set by Suarez. You would like her to be able to capitalize on that one-on-one -on -one situation with the block. 
Watch the tip, yeah? takes the first contact. Here comes Mignon. Dug up by Choboy. Suarez back to Bertolino off the block. Choboy to Bergen Riley, and they look to run back at Alec off of one foot. Otene just long. That's her 10th swing. Too many swings, in my opinion, to start this match for Otene. They need to spread it out and establish the other attackers. So Georgia Tech will call a timeout as Nebraska on a 3-0 run here in the opening set. Well, the number one overall seed in this year's tournament, it is the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They started off with a bang, set a world record in attendance with over 92,000 fans playing in their football stadium. They won the Big Ten title for the first time since 2017. And the sixth time, they're the number one overall seed. They have won two national championships as the number one overall seed. Six all Big Ten selections. That is a Nebraska record. And Santa, wouldn't it be nice if you're a Cornhusker fan to bring them a national championship. <laughs> it certainly would be nice. They also went on a 27 match win streak with three freshman starters on the court. It's incredible what Nebraska has done because you look at coming into the season, there's an attacking error by Becca Allen. Six new players, so much youth on this team, and here they are. And John Cook says with every single month, every single week, this team continues to elevate in the practice gym. They love to train. He said, I don't have to motivate this group when we walk into the gym. They already motivate themselves. And he said, it's been so enjoyable watching the evolution of this team from start to where we are now in the season. In the age of the transfer portal and COVID years, John Cook has a team that has zero seniors. And they're doing all of this. They have a transfer leading them as a captain. As successful as they are right now in this season, they're all coming back. Yes. They're not going anywhere, Ooh. which is wild to think about. That's a scary thought yes, for the rest is, of right. the country. Yeah, for everybody else, Cornhusker fans are fine with it. Logrich in the middle. Nebraska saves it. Mignon on the right side. And it hit the antenna. So a point for Nebraska. If you hit the antenna, it means it's out of bounds. And Michelle Collier has that green challenge card again. Georgia Tech is challenging, but there was a net violation. So they're going to look to see if Nebraska was in the net in this rally. I did see some net movement. Not sure if it was the ball. Again, if you're correct in your challenge, you get to keep it. So the antenna definitely moves. It looked like Becca Alec, number five in white, might have got it with the bottom part of her body, the bottom part of the net. And so you just wonder, did Becca Alec hit the net before it hits the antenna? Yong hits the antenna. Joseph Gustafson is our R2. He'll let us know what the call is here. No net touch. So Georgia Tech goes down to one challenge. Unless we go to a fifth set, they'll get an additional one. This is one of Nebraska's strongest rotations with Bergen Riley serving their freshman setter. Rodriguez saves it out of the scorer's table. Here comes Merritt Beeson. Mogrich dug back over by Riley. Bertolino, Lexi Rodriguez everywhere. What a rally. Not giving up. Beeson, other side. Oh, and Bianca Bertolino is going to end a marathon of a rally. What a play. Both sides defensively just keeping the rally alive. Back to back. I mean, this by Riley just sitting on it. Even though it's an overpass, just a great dig. And then Bertolino, she does this. She tips the ball right over top of the blocker's back. So you don't know who should play it there. Merritt Beeson tries to, just can't get her hands on it in time. 
Bianca Bertolino is actually the libero for the Argentinian national team, but she said she loves playing six rotations outside better. Becca Alec in the middle. And Michelle Collier in her 10th season, she's got the most NCAA tournament wins at Georgia Tech with seven. Was the head coach at Jacksonville before taking over this Tech program. You can tell her players absolutely love to play for her. Oh, yeah. I love watching her. Go. Why? She's so passionate. She's got such a good feel for the game. It also matters when you're a great player in your own right. She's a great competitor, and you can tell she is in it. The angle that Merrick Beeson just hit that shot with. Goodness gracious, timeout. Nebraska up 17 to eight in the first set. Nebraska up in the first set, and Allie Batenhorst, four kills, she has no errors. She has been so impressive on the left side, finding ways to score off the block, going high flat hands, but she has been a huge right spot for Nebraska on that left side. And I think Bergen Riley as a true freshman setter is so impressive to watch. I know you do too, Holly, as former setters. To be a true freshman taking over this Nebraska offense, that comes with a lot of weight and responsibility. And she has handled it beautifully all season long. She's so even keeled. Nothing really seems to distract her, rattle her whatsoever. And we talked to her about that yesterday. She said, you know, there is a lot of pressure because there's that natural leadership role at the setting position, and you're coming into a program that's won five national championships. Yeah, obviously there's expectations here in Nebraska, but it also helps to have the weapons that she have and the first contact. That really helps her facilitate and run this offense, but she has done a phenomenal job this season. Bertolino. There goes Batenhorst. Bertolino tipping out of the back row, saved by Bergen Riley. Beeson going right after Bianca Bertolino. Really nice job here by Riley coming up underneath to be able to keep this play alive. And then she gets Merritt Beeson in a one on one situation. She goes right through the seam for a really nice kill. Rodriguez grazing the tape. You can hear the crowd react. And then Larissa Mendez with the kill, the freshman out of Brazil. That's her first kill to start this match. She's one of three players on Georgia Tech's roster with over 300 kills on the season. She does a really nice job going high seam between blocks. Well, this connection there on the set. Doesn't matter because Ali Batenhorst just comes back and gets a huge stomp. I mean, to, admit, to be able to cover the misconnect and then get the block in return, I mean, Batenhorst is dialed in for Nebraska. You have to have such strong hands, by the way, to block outside of your body like that. She's not in line, she went outside. Excellent block. Tamara Otene, touched by Andy Jackson. Back to Batenhorst. Pierce had to reach behind her head. The run, Andy Jackson on the slide, tooling the block, and Nebraska five points away. When you watch Nebraska, they've got so many weapons. They could use anybody at any time, and they're terminal. It's been so impressive. This is a setter's dream, right? It really is. <laughs> Pick your poison. Great serve. I love a good short serve in. Nebraska has been challenging out today, especially when she's in the front row. You've got a setter and a middle blocker lined up in front short. And that's a little bit disruptive to Otene getting to that ball to pass. Three straight points for the Cornhuskers. They go back at Otene. Pimentel has to hustle after it, out of system swing for Otene, and she sends it down the line. And what you just saw there from Merritt Beeson at the service line, she's yo-yoing Otene. She goes deep at her chest, and then she drops in a short one. So she's thinking short on the next one, and then she hits her deep again. You're yo-yoing an outside hitter to make them move to wear them down, essentially. And stress them out. 
She stepped on the line. Good spot for the ball on the serve. Yeah, from all the way up here in the corner, guys. See that? Yes. 2020, baby. Freshman Luisi Suarez jumps, toes on the line, foot fault. Nebraska needs three points to take the opening set. Mignon. Point court Huskers. I'd love to be a fly on the wall in the next huddle for Georgia Tech and what Michelle Collier has to say to her team. She said, we have to be play at our highest level if we want to upset Nebraska on their home floor. And this has been a very unclean first set from Georgia Tech, unfortunately. Yeah, nine attacking errors. They're hitting negative 059. And Otene misses again at a set point, Nebraska. 10 attack errors, that is not gonna get you a win, especially here in Nebraska. Boy going at Otene, Mignong. And a center line violation going under the net. That's going to give the opening frame to the number one team in the nation. Nebraska takes set one, 25 to 11. Nebraska textbook first set. Georgia Tech uncharacteristic with the mistakes. They got to clean it up if they want to take it to this number one seed. Nebraska Volleyball knows what it's like to win not one, not two, not three, not four, but five national championships. And some impressive names that have come through this Nebraska program. You see Danny Buscoop Kelly in that former picture with Jordan Larson. Michaela Becky, part of the 2017 NCAA champion team. Their last national championship coming in 2017. John Cook has been the head coach for four of those national titles. He's taken them to 10 semifinal appearances. And they're the number one seed for the sixth time in program history. Two times before, they've won a national title as the number one seed. You saw the t-shirt, it says it all. This is a volleyball school. Yes, it is. The first set, Georgia Tech. The hitting errors put them in the negative 11 hitting errors. Yeah, I, I think it was a case of nerves. This is a big stage, and they did not come out and play their best volleyball. But Nebraska took care of business. They were serving, playing incredible team defense. The great news if you're Georgia Tech, volleyball, you totally wipe the slate for set number two. You start at 0-0. Zero, zero. Well, remember what Michelle Gallier told us yesterday at practice. We have to be able to have a short-term memory. If things don't go well, or we make a bad play, a string of bad plays, we got to forget and we got to be able to move on and focus on the attention at hand, being able to execute. Let's see if they are able to do that here in the second set. But something they've implemented the last couple of days in practice, too, is going quickly from one point to the next, playing through it, not letting you think too much about what just happened as Otene wipes that into the antenna. 13 hitting errors for Georgia Tech. But Nebraska has a fantastic game plan. They're taking Georgia Tech out of their offense by getting them in serve receive trouble, and it's paid off. Today we'll get a swing, but a big old block by Becca Alec is there. Rodriguez the bump set to Beeson. D'Amico back to Otene. Free ball to the Cornhuskers. Bergen Riley wants to use Harper Murray and she got the touch. Harper Murray flat off the hands, gets a touch of the Georgia Tech block and they are relentless. Nebraska just touching every ball Georgia Tech puts over the net. Giving up on nothing. That's what you got to do at the round of 16. D'Amico running her middle with Liv Mogridge. Liv Mogridge, quick attack out of the middle. She had a well-formed block in front of her, had a sliver wrist away in that angle and finds it. Heavy ball from Georgia Tech's middle Mogridge. I feel like she's at 80% right now coming back from that injury. She missed 12 matches with a leg injury, but a great presence on the court for Georgia Tech. Harper Murray will show that she can swing on either pen. 
You're used to seeing her fantastic attacks on the outside pin. Look at the right side pin here. She comes inside the block, goes thumb up to cut that really sharp angle to zone two. Excellent hit, excellent execution. DeAndre Pierce in the middle, rejected. Mendez. Hitting error point for Nebraska. Georgia Tech just relying so much on those pins and Nebraska has touched everything that they've tried to attack. So much pressure. As a setter, what can you do to help your pins right now? Well, first of all, it's that first contact that helps keep you in the system, and that allows you to run the middles, and they have not been able to run the middles to take the pressure off the pins. And then that was a double called on Bella D'Amico. You can see Bianca Bertolino, captain of this team, just trying to calm her team down in that huddle after that point. Meanwhile, Nebraska is hitting 500 early on here in set two. Oh, Rodriguez, that's why she's an All-American. Gives it everything she has. Bertolino out of the back row, but long. And Michelle Collier is going to the green challenge card. Unbelievable stab to keep it alive, and then Riley pushing it up to Nebraska to attack. Wow. If Georgia Tech does not win this challenge, they're out of challenges until set five if we go there. They are I looking for a touch. Appreciate Michelle Collier fighting for her team here. Larissa Mendez. Oh. That ball absolutely yeah. is touched, and quite frankly, not sure but why. that's not the ball. It was the big set out of the back row. Yeah, it row was out of the back row. Calling the challenge. Good call, Holly. Okay, because it was Bertolino's attack out of the back row. It was later on in the rally. That was not the play they're looking at. They're looking at for the swing from number five, Bertolino, out of the back row. And they do overturn the call. That's a crucial win for head coach of Georgia Tech, Michelle A. Collier. She needed that. Tech with one challenge remaining. Nebraska still has both. And Luis Suarez in to serve and set. Wow, coffin, coffin corner. The linesman had to move, but it caught right where both lines meet her 11th ace of the season. Suarez, a true freshman out of Brazil, made the all-conference freshman team. <laughs> Batenhorst, give her five kills, no errors. Batenhorst had has a great start to this match. She's been doing it all for her, her team on the outside pin. A little bit of movement there from Bergen Riley, really nice job. Alfano Min Yong with a kill. We welcome those of you watching a thriller between Louisville and Creighton. We are here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Courtney Lyle, Holly McPeak, and Katie George in a packed Devaney Center. Nebraska dominated the first set 25 to 11, and Georgia Tech is hitting in the negative right now in this match. Finally seeing a little life out of Georgia Tech, though. Stringing together a good run from the service line here. Nebraska, the number one overall seed, and a solo stop by their captain, the transfer from Florida, Merritt Beeson. We talk about how relentless Nebraska is defensively. Look at Merritt Beeson, great eye work to isolate only blocker in front of that attacker. Nebraska, a team that added six new players. They have no seniors on the roster, and they are 30 and one on the season. Three ball back to Tech. Bianca Bertolino. <laughs> and Bainhorst just took it. What a 
Heads up play by Allie Batenhorst, recognizing what's happening at the net. Instead of dropping down to her platform and playing this ball, she just goes up and attacks it, puts it deep into the court zone one where Georgia Tech defenders are not. She has been great. Six kills, one error, so she's hitting 417. Nebraska's creating opportunities with their defense. Lots of positive block touches, and they're able to continue to create opportunities to score with their defense. And Nebraska, a team, prides themselves on defense third in the nation in opponent hitting percentage. As opponents against the Cornhuskers only hitting 140. Well, I'd say that they're holding uh, Georgia Tech lower to that yes. so far. Negative 096 for the Yellow Jackets on the match. And I will say some of that is Georgia Tech self-inflicted wounds yes. because they have had many errors so far. 11 attacking errors in the first set. They're up to 15 now. Bianca Bertolino shoved right back at her. But the setters for Georgia Tech, they've got their track shoes on. They're trying to run balls down just to put up anything hittable. Suarez runs this down tight to the net and then the block knows where that ball's going and they camp out. And that's because Nebraska has put so much pressure on Georgia Tech's passing line here from the service line. And we're looking to go at Bertolino again, but it's a bit long and the serve out. The serve is long, point, Georgia Tech. Laney Choboy thinks she got robbed. Yep. John Cook, though, safely seated on the sidelines, not getting up to challenge the ball. And Nebraska does have both of their challenges remaining. Georgia Tech has one remaining. Unless we go to a fifth set, each team gets an additional challenge. Here's Bella D'Amico, one of the two setters that Georgia Tech uses in this 6-2 offense. Andy Jackson looking great on the slide. What a great run by Bergen Riley. She gets Andy Jackson isolated in a one-on-one -on -one situation. She's got the whole net to work with going off one foot. She cuts it back cross court, places it right in front of Otene. Bergen Riley, the Big Ten setter of the year, the first freshman ever to win that award. Lots of pressure to come in and be the starting setter from day one as a freshman, especially in Nebraska. Larissa Mendez on the left pin, number 11 for Georgia Tech. Finding a way to score on the left side, it has not been easy. D'Amico finally pushed the ball out far enough so she was able to turn down the line. I agree. I feel like both sides, left and right, the ball can be wider so they have more opportunity to go off the edge of the block. Show boy. Got all of that. Nebraska gets it back over. D'Amico with the bump set to Tamara Otene, but she turns it too wide and out of bounds. 16 hitting errors for Georgia Tech. That's the story. And it's got them hitting in the negative. To negative Tamara Otene hitting negative 316. Riley serves at Bertolino. Liv Mogridge in the middle, and she's brought them some life when they can get her the ball. And it's a good pass, right? If they can put the ball in the center's hands, they can run that middle high percentage attack. Mogridge missed 12 matches with a leg injury. They say she's about 80% right now, but a good presence on the floor for them. Becca Alec, number five in white for Nebraska, attacking that gap between the middle and right side blocker for Georgia Tech. You see that space between them. She's able to score attacking the right back defender for Georgia Tech. There's Harper Murray, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Otene. Getting the touch, and that's tomorrow Otene's fourth kill. Really nice job by Otene. Out of system set, just staying calm, placing the ball deep into the court, results in a kill. Georgia Tech upset Florida at home. Otene had 21 kills in that match, seven errors. But today, for Otene, four kills, nine errors. Suarez pushing it back to Otene. Figuring things out. So much power. She's so athletic, dynamic, quick off the floor. If she can catch those high hands, I mean, look at the pop off the block here when she takes this swing. 
go so far outside the court of play, Nebraska defenders can't quite get to it in time. Yeah, Michelle Collier, Georgia Tech's head coach, told us she loved the resiliency that she saw in her team in the Florida win when they upset the Gators in the second round. They need that here. Mafeda <laughs> Mignong in. Georgia Tech showing that they're resilient to big defensive plays on their side of the net, and that's how they're going to get it done. 3 0 run. Here comes Beeson. Just a great response from Nebraska. Georgia Tech finally gets rolling a little bit, strings together a couple of points, and you go back to Merritt Beeson, who you know more often than not is going to be able to get a kill. In this moment, she goes over top of the block for a really nice swing. You got Nebraska up by three here in set two in Lincoln. Well, we have four outstanding teams here in Lincoln, Nebraska. You're watching Nebraska and Georgia Tech right now. Our next match from Lincoln will be Arkansas and Kentucky. That'll be the third meeting this season between those two SEC teams. But Kentucky with the 2-0 advantage, but can they beat Arkansas three times? Arkansas is very scrappy. I saw Louisville, a little drama in Louisville with a 5 set win over Creighton. Here's what's gone on so far in this match. Nebraska hitting over 300. Georgia Tech hitting in the negative. But are the Yellow Jackets starting to right the ship? Rejected by Allie Batenhorst, her second block. Nebraska has been relentless, loading up Otene in serve-receive. They need other people to score, but Nebraska block there on the slide. Five team blocks for Nebraska as Batenhorst uses her face to block that last one. You can see her red face from up here. Yeah. Jackson in the middle, that connection is strong with her freshman, fellow freshman setter, Bergen Riley. And the three freshmen for Nebraska have played together. They played together for USA over the last couple years, came in early, were able to go on the Brazil trip with this team, and they've really found a great connection. 3-0 run for Nebraska. They won the first set 25-11. Service error by Rodriguez trying to go down the line. Wherever Otene is for Georgia Tech, Nebraska is going at her. And number nine in Navy, they have been attacking her with the serve all afternoon. Mayor Beeson flying in. That ball had a lot of pop on it, and Suarez did a nice job of getting that ball up. Unfortunately, you just hope for Georgia Tech's middle blockers to turn around and be ready to make a play on it, and they couldn't get it done. Anybody turn and keep that ball alive. Suarez sacrificed her body to keep it alive. Mary Beeson will go back to serve, already a captain in her first season with Nebraska, transferred in after two years at Florida. Bianca Bertolino. Just her fourth kill. And they need more of that if you're Georgia Tech. Continue to use your good arm on Bertolino on the outside pin. Here she goes cross court in between the seam of the block. She had line and she had seam. Service error. Georgia Tech has made a change. Leah Harper has come in, number 12 in Navy in the front row. And they will set Harper. She is stopped by the Nebraska block, making six blocks. I'll tell you, Leah Harper for Georgia Tech was impressive yesterday at practice, but she comes in well-formed block for Nebraska on her first swing. Coverage should be able to pick up that ball. 
And I would just say, for any team who makes it to the round of 16, it's an incredible feat. Speaking from experience, so you don't want to get to this stage. You don't want to play in a match like this and not play your best, right? And I don't think we've seen Georgia Tech's best thus far this afternoon, and I hope we do. You mentioned that this is a resilient team. We need to see a response from them because the worst thing you can do is lose in the NCAA tournament and walk away knowing you didn't play your best. And right now, I don't think Georgia Tech can say that. And so I really hope that in this huddle, they're having a conversation and it resonates with these players and we see them lay it all on the line like we did in Gainesville a week ago because that was unbelievable volleyball. You want to be able to say, yeah, we got beat, but we did everything we possibly could. We laid it on the line and it wasn't enough and that's okay. I don't think we've seen that from Georgia Tech so far. Yeah, this is a Georgia Tech team that went on the road to Florida in the second round and they won in five sets and Tech has had a great season. Michelle e. Collier told us that Florida win, it was a total team win. It was their first true NCAA tournament road win in program history. Got them to their fourth regional semifinal or round of 16. And Bianca Bertolino, Tamara Otene, they were first team all conference selections. They have, they are two of the three players on this roster that have over 300 kills. But Georgia Tech has looked discombobulated all afternoon. Well, the coaching staff obviously trying to get them refocused on what they need to do and get them back to the bases. Claudio Pinheiro and Michelle Collier both urging the team to take care of business on the court so they can play their best volleyball. Meanwhile, Nebraska looks relaxed. They look comfortable. They're playing at home, and they're glad to be here. They have won 20 straight NCAA tournament matches at home. Andy Jackson gets just enough of it. And I think the Nebraska players will be the first to tell you losing to Wisconsin after they had already wrapped up the Big Ten title was the best thing that could have happened to this team. It took all the pressure off, right? Yes, you want to win every single time you step on the court, but the players will tell you, eh, it's okay. It wasn't the end of the world. We actually were happy that we finally got that one loss in our record. But John Cook told us that match taught them just how high of a level they're going to play from here on out. It's not going to be easy because you're trying to fight your way to Tampa and get back to the national semifinals. They also learned that Wisconsin's going to come at them with an aggressive serve, and every coach says this, but you have to win the serve and pass game. Today, Nebraska has come out and put all sorts of service pressure on Georgia Tech. They've scored 25 points off their serve. Nebraska four points away from taking set two. In flies Andy Jackson on one foot. She's done such a nice job going behind Bergen Riley this afternoon. They isolate her on the slide here. She beats Mogridge in the middle there, cuts it back. Deep cross court shot, so hard to defend. True freshman Andy Jackson, we mentioned it. All five of Nebraska's freshmen enrolled early. They came in January. They were able to play with the beach team here at Nebraska, get in the weight room, and John Cook said it's made all the difference. We have continuity, right? You're able to build relationships, build chemistry with your team early on, rather than all the freshmen arriving on campus in August and trying to fill that out as you're actually playing games. So being able to come early and enroll early has been a, a massive help for this Nebraska team. Becca Allen quick through the block. She gets on top of that ball so quick, Georgia Tech's late on the press. Nebraska has gotten that pass. They've been able to go to their middles who have combined for nine kills and one error in this match so far. So that first contact is crucial. Get those middle attackers. Right here, Mogridge would be a great choice, but look at Nebraska. Becca Alex so good getting outside and closing that block. Set, set point, Nebraska. If a, a middle blocker is eating, her best friend's a Libro, because that means she's put in her <laughs> position to have success, and Nebraska's been able to do that today, thanks to Lexi Rodriguez and Lainey Choboy. Well, Becca Alec and Lexi Rodriguez play at the ones for the beach team, mm -hmm. so they are very good friends. It'll be set point Nebraska timeout here. We mentioned all the new faces for Nebraska. What a puzzle it was for John Cook. An interesting maze for the Corn Huskers this season. They added six new ears of corn, six new faces, no seniors. 
and yeah, they still had a tough schedule to navigate through, to be tested, to build up to this moment and fight their way through this, starting with 27 straight wins before they lost their first and only match to Wisconsin. Is it enough to propel them all the way to Tampa? I think so. I, I, I think they continue to get better, and it's the growth we've seen from the beginning of the season. They were very good, but I feel like they're even better, and they're just dialed in with the servant's attack. It'll be set point Nebraska here in set number two out of this timeout. Georgia Tech still hitting in the negative for this match. 21 attacking errors for the Yellow Jackets. Meanwhile, just four for Nebraska. Bergen Riley will serve for the set. Pimentel steps up to take it. Mogridge in the middle. The block was waiting. Lexi Rodriguez with the bump set to Harper Murray. She turns it down the line, and Nebraska leads the match two sets to none. They end on a 7-2 run. They're playing clean, great volleyball. They look so at ease as well out there on the floor today. Lexi Rodriguez, good transition set, and then the turn down the line by Harper Murray for the 25th point. Nebraska hits 500 in that set. They're hitting 370 for the match, and we're joined now by Nebraska head coach John Cook. Coach, it seems like your attack or your service at pressure from the back line has been focused on Otene. Was that part of the game plan? Uh, we're kind of serving by rotation, uh, you know, just trying to slow them down and take them out of what they want to do. So some, a lot of the time it is her, but we're also giving some other players, depending on the rotation. We'd, we'd have to do a coach's clink there, Holly. Okay. Coach Cook, how has your defensive effort at the, at the net as well as in the backcourt impacted this match so far? Well, when you get to this time of year, you got to put pressure on these teams and, uh, you know, we're, that's, that's our bread and butter. So we got to keep it up here and, we can't let them get comfortable because they've got some great players. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate right, it. Thanks. So what do you say in that locker room for Georgia Tech to come out? Oof. Uh, first off, you have nothing to lose at this point. Your back's against the wall, down two sets to none. They're playing excellent, but we're also giving it to them. That's where my frustration would be. I mean, you're looking at a woman who's one of the fiercest competitors that we know in Michelle Collier. Play your best, leave it all on the line, and if it's not good enough, okay, we'll go home and we've had a great season. But right now they're not playing their best. They have more attacking errors than they do kills. That can't happen if you want to beat a good team, not at this level. And so I want to see Georgia Tech get back to their roots and play their game. That's great backcourt defense and playing clean volleyball. What are you talking about if you're Nebraska, Holly? Well, I think Nebraska is doing everything pretty well. They are attacking from the service line, scoring points when they serve with their defense. And they have been relentlessly putting pressure on Georgia Tech. So the Cornhuskers Huskers will try to continue that. Otene, Choboy got an up roll, and Harper Murray tried, but it went into the net. First time that Georgia Tech has had a lead in this match. And they do it with their defense and a good transition swing by Otene. And look at that effort from Nebraska. That's how hard it is to score on them. Every single point that Georgia Tech gets in this match, it's going to be hard. You got to dig deep for it. Morgan Riley pushing it to the back line. First time she's called her own number. And I saw her practicing that yesterday, going to that deep corner, because that left back defender usually comes into the middle to pick up that middle dump. You know, this time last year, Bergen Riley was still in high school. She is the second true freshman to start from day one under John Cook. The first being Nicklin Hames, who was a four-year starter.
point for Tech. Becca Alec, the middles have been so good. And it starts with a perfect pass. Right on top of Bergen Riley's head, she's able to run a 31 gap set to Becca Alec, who's able to go right between the block there. It's so fast, really hard for blockers to get in position to slow that down. There he goes after Bertolino. Otene trying to turn it. I like the idea. Georgia Tech handles the serve receive, good pass to their setter, execution just off offensively. You wipe it onto the next. Yep. Forget next it. Next play, and that was the focus for Georgia Tech. Hey, we're not going to win every point, but next play mentality. Keep serving at the outsides. Bertolino does get a touch. Bianca Bertolino on the left gets her sixth kill for Georgia Tech. She has really stepped up her offense this season for Georgia Tech. You know, Julia Bergman was the featured attacker in this offense for so long for the Yellow Jackets. And a break for Georgia Tech. Mishandled ball by Nebraska, one of the very few errors that we've seen all day. Beeson coming in. Beeson has five kills, no errors. Really nice job by Merritt Beeson. Inside set, hangs just a little bit. She gets her feet there and then turns this ball just a tad down the line. Beats Otene to that back line. She's it, Merritt Beeson, she's already established she can crush that ball sharp down, down the line, but she's also got that angle ball, which puts so much pressure on the block. Rodriguez on the dig. They'll go back to Beeson. Yes. She's just moving it around. Line, angle. She might throw in a tip here and there. She's just showing how versatile of an attacker she is on that right side pin. And every time driving hard on her approach, very hard to stop. We mentioned Merritt Beeson and Lexi Rodriguez, you see serving there. Those are the two captains. You talk about stepping up. Merritt Beeson, such an important voice for Nebraska. On the first and second rounds, she literally lost her voice. So all of her teammates told us Lexi Rodriguez got a lot more vocal. She did, and she said it pushed me out of my comfort zone. She said I was not comfortable being that vocal, so she said I'm, I'm really happy Merritt Beeson found her voice again. Yeah. <laughs> she is back. <gasps> Allie Batenhorst make it seven kills to lead the Cornhuskers now. Such a pretty set, too. Bergen Riley, she's on the run here. She just puts up a really pretty flat ball there. Allie Batenhorst able to go up and attack, high hands, puts it deep in the court. Batenhorst has stepped up in that other outside hitter position opposite Harper Murray since Lindsey Krause has been out with an injury. Still unavailable today, but did warm up with the team. Krause has not played since October 14th. Another hitting air for Georgia Tech, trying to run that middle. I like the idea, though, getting more hitters involved rather than just your two outside pins. I agree. That's how they've had such a successful season with offensive balance. I was trying to try Deandra Pierce off of one foot, and she gets a touch. And I love that. Going back to a hitter after maybe making a mistake, you try it again, give them their confidence back, give them another opportunity to make a swing and get a point. Bianca Bertolino, the libero on the Argentinian national team. In comes Tamara Otene, and she is stuffed. When we talked to John Cook yesterday, he talked about Bergen Riley working on her all-around game. Look at her drop her inside hand. That's eye work, seeing where the hitter's attacking, impressing it back onto the opponent's side of the net. That's impressive. Good self-awareness, knowing that Jackson wasn't going to get there in time to close. I got to fill that hole. Yeah, she has been so focused on pushing herself, not just with her setting, but as you mentioned, her blocking, her defense, her serving. Oh, today turns it down the line. 
In, early in this match, she kept turning that ball wide, finally getting the edge of the block. And I believe that's because that set is getting pushed out a little wider. Liz Patterson in for the first time to serve for Georgia Tech, the senior out of Birmingham, Alabama. And a service error. This is a must-win set for Georgia Tech. A win for Nebraska puts them in the round of eight. I think it's fair to say we've seen Georgia Tech side out better this set as compared to the first two. We're seeing more back and forth, not allowing Nebraska to go on long runs with their serve. Kennedy or in the match as a serving specialist for Nebraska. She was one of the setters last year. And Anna Bozy entering the match for the first time with the kill. Really nice gap set here. Anna Bozy gets on the 31 between those blockers. A nice job by Eloise Suarez to set that ball up. Bozy was the one that filled in the 12 matches when Liv Mogridge was out with an injury. And she's known as a defensive middle blocker, but her offense is really coming along for Georgia Tech. Laney Choboy diving out, but it's an ace for the Yellow Jackets. And that ties it at nine. Yeah, in the short surf, so strategic. The freshman from Brazil, Eloise Suarez, drops it in front of the passers. Teammates say she's a fighter. She adds a spark and an energy that we need to succeed. Service error. This has by far been the closest set. We're seeing glimpses of what Georgia Tech has looked like all season. They did not look that way in the first two sets, hitting in the negative. Harper Murray. The pancake up by Pimentel. Three ball back to the Huskers. Riley back to Murray. And the block by Otene. Big defensive stop. We're seeing some inspired defense from Georgia Tech right now. Look at Paula Pimentel slide under that ball, keep it alive, and her teammates help Georgia Tech get a swing out of it. Murray on the right side with the tip. Suarez back to Bertolino, and she's rejected. Harper Murray doing some work defensively at the net. Watch her on the right side. Block touch there, it gets covered. And then Becca Alex so good at covering and closing that seam. Nebraska with nine team blocks. Try Bozy in the middle. Net violation by Nebraska. Georgia Tech able to score out of the middle. Back to serve for the Yellow Jackets, number eight, Paola Pimentel. Paola Pimentel, the libero for Georgia Tech. Third in the conference oh. and digs per sense and she sneaks it over. Just like she drew it up. Yep. And another lead for Georgia Tech. They met at the beginning of this set as well. Just by one point, but it counts. And every time Georgia Tech takes that one point lead, you hear this crowd come alive a little bit more and get a little bit louder to support their team. <laughs> Allie Batenhorst. <laughs> Pimentel steps in, sets Mendez. Becca Alec with a back set to Batenhorst, and it's long. Point Tech, they're up by two. Great job by Paola Pimentel sticking in there in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You're mano -y mano with the outside hitter, and she just sticks in and digs that ball up. That's the kind of backcourt defense Michelle Collier hangs her hat on. That's what we expected to see at the very beginning of this match. Largest lead for Georgia Tech all afternoon. Merritt Beeson has something to say about it. Otene out of 
the back row. Georgia Tech wants a touch, but they won't get it. And this is something that Georgia Tech does so well. They run the back row attack. Even against three blockers, Otene is usually able to find success, just pushes that one a little bit too long. Ninth time we've been tied. The short serve by Nebraska. One of the front row attackers takes it with the overpass. And you wish Paola Pimentel, the libero for Georgia Tech, is standing right there trying to call Mendez off. Mendez just sticks in there a little bit too long. Let her do what she does, and that's pass. But that short serve mm -hmm. causes that stress between the two passers. They go long now at Pimentel. It'll be out of system here for Otene, who tips. Nebraska's on a 3-0 run. Batenhorst dug up by Pimentel. Bertolino tipping, and that ends the run. And that was part of the scouting report that we watched from Nebraska. Number five is going to go short over the block, and it's so short that that right back defender needs to be ready for it. Oh. When you need a kill, you go to your captain. She does such a nice job cutting inside that block. Merritt Beeson has been on fire this afternoon for Nebraska. Beeson with eight kills and no errors. Close third set here in Lincoln. Coverage of the Division I Women's Volleyball Championship continues through Sunday on ESPN2 at ESPNU for more information on match times and listings visit NCAA.com the home for all 90 NCAA championships we're here in Lincoln Nebraska in a packed Devaney Center Courtney Lyle Holly McPeak and Katie George with you a must win set for Georgia Tech as Nebraska has taken the first two Suarez going behind to Deandra Pierce. Really nice job by Suarez, moving Pierce around. We've seen her go on a slide, but here she keeps her right on her backside. A quick set, A6, whatever you want to call it, but she gets it right through the block. She beats him with her timing. Love the speed of that set. Batenhorst taking a little bit off, and it works. She's leading Nebraska with nine kills. Allie Batenhorst has been crushing the ball cross court, but this time just cuffs it right into that donut in the middle of the court. All the Georgia Tech players just playing around that perimeter. She's hitting 333 in the first two NCAA tournament matches. She hit 136, so 200 points better. That looks better for Tamara Otene, too. Up to eight kills, trying to dig herself out of the negative as she's had 13 attacking errors. In Georgia Tech, definitely better energy doing what they do best. We're seeing them attack out of the middle. Otene's finding ways to keep the ball in play and not make those unforced errors. When you have the pass and you can run the middle, it just opens things up for everybody. You become less one-dimensional. Jackson off of one foot since Tech scrambling, but they recover. It's a free ball to Nebraska. Down to the floor with Anna Bozzi. Great hustle on both sides. And it's the transition kill. Look at just a stab. They're able to stay in the play and use their middles to score the point. Nebraska will take a timeout here. You see Bozzi just throw it down in the middle. Beautiful Georgia Tech kill off their D. Nebraska takes a timeout. Georgia Tech in a must win set. They're up by a point. Round 16 is today. We'll have the round of eight in the volleyball tournament for you on Saturday. Georgia Tech up by a point here in set three. They have to win this to extend the match, and that's another service error. What's been the difference for Georgia Tech in this set? 
Well, they've been able to score off their serve with their team defense, and that's been a huge difference. They've been able to attack out of the middle. They've scored six points off their serve. In the first two sets, they only scored six points total. So over by Suarez, right back at them. And here comes Otene with the roll. Kennedy or ready. Merrick Beeson too high, no touch. Line judge on Nebraska side called for touch. Head official says nope, overrules, no touch. And Nebraska will not challenge. Georgia Tech up by one, going to 25. Luisi Suarez. Beeson with a bomb, but it's handled beautifully by Pimentel. And then the block sends it home. Becca Alec. Becca Alec is so good laterally closing that block. She is the team hype girl. And she gets to celebrate her own play here. Look at this big transition block out of number five in white. Three blocks for Becca Alec were tied for the 14th time. Botane turning it. Rodriguez got there, and Showboy goes diving into the bench and into her head coach. Coach Cook knew that was coming. Showboy does not slow down for anything. He had his arms ready. Look at this ball deflected by Rodriguez he and Showboy. No, no, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Laney Showboy, a freshman. He told us everybody wanted to play with her on the beach. You love her pursuit, you love her passion and her energy. She brings so much life to this Nebraska team and as a freshman, she has been so impactful as that first DS off the bench. Suarez pushing it to Bertolino with the tip. Allie Batenhorst. Gets blocked, and Merrick Beeson still gets a swing off. Never giving up on the play is Nebraska. They are relentless. Look at the tip. Reach back. A block and cover. Everyone getting low, and then Merrick Beeson getting her feet to that ball to crush it down the line. Wow. Just a great job not giving up on the play. Riley makes the first touch, then Alec, and then Beeson's able to get that kill. And you feel the energy in this room, right? You feel the energy, the passion. That's because Georgia Tech's pressing them, right? And, and you feel that passion and the reaction from this Nebraska team is because this is the first time that Georgia Tech has really thrown a nice punch. And now it is a race to 25 points, leading the way for Nebraska right now. Merritt Beeson. Nine kills, just one attacking error. She's such a powerful hitter on the right side. She's got all the shots. She can cut it really sharp across the court. She obviously can get it done from the service line. She moves the ball so you don't know where to set up positionally as a defender. And I think that has to be so frustrating when you're facing her. She has been such a great transfer. This collective group was here, right? You mentioned all the freshmen coming in. John Cook doesn't have to get a lot of transfers usually because they assess talent so well. But Merritt Beeson has been pivotal coming from Florida this year. And look but at the kill leaders today, the balance, and a lot of young faces on that graphic. Yeah, you look at that. Andy Jackson, a freshman. Harper Murray, a freshman. Merritt Beeson, first year player as a transfer. So three of their kill leaders, new players on the court for Nebraska. First Nebraska lead since it was 16-15. Five points away from the round of eight. Murray goes after Otene. Suarez to the backside to Mendez. Bergen Riley will do the same with her opposite, and it's a good one. Mary Beeson has 10. Bianca Bertolino has beaten Nebraska on that really short tip right over the blockers. Merritt Beeson says, I can do it. Well, and she's established her power, right? The defense is on their heels, so that Absolutely. makes that shot that much better. Three straight for the Cornhuskers. Oh, 
Otene out of the back row. Back to Batenhorst. Tenth kill for Batenhorst, who's been amazing on that left pin, both defensively and offensively today for Nebraska. Look at her pick up this ball and then get in position to score. And you've seen a couple tips from Georgia Tech here. You can't tip your way out of this game. You can't tip to get to a fourth set. You got to be able to go to your power at different times. That's what we've seen from Nebraska, and that's why they've got a three-point lead here in the third set. They're on a 4-0 run now. They need three more points to advance to the next round. They have loved being at home. Who wouldn't? 19-0 at home this season, 13 sweeps during that time. They've only dropped seven sets at home. Most impressively, they have won 20 straight NCAA tournament matches at home. They're very comfortable here. And we, when we talked to Harper Murray yesterday, the freshman outside hitter, she said, look, we are so happy to be on our home court playing in front of our fans in this big of a match. It's daunting. I wouldn't want to come here as an opponent and play here for the first time in front of all of these fans. And I do think it played an impact early on in this match for Georgia Tech. They were a little bit deer in headlights. We saw a lot of mistakes. We didn't see them play in rhythm their normal game. And I think that's because this is shocking, stepping on a court in front of all these fans, certainly dressed in red, too. And this match started at 1 o'clock local time on a Thursday. And look at all these people. I see a lot of young kids here, too. Kudos to mom and dad for saying, you know what, we're going to go watch some volleyball. You can worry about geometry or, well, kids, what, what math do they I don't they think you're doing geometry in elementary, elementary school, school thing. yet. Algebra, no, just straight Katie's up Katie's here for skipping Fractions. school for volleyball. I'm all for it, mom and dad. A little hooky never hurt nobody. Harper Murray will take that. Dribbles over the net. Four zero run for Nebraska. Their largest lead in this set. Rosie dug up by Murray. Batenhorst saved by Pimentel. And Becca Alec again getting out and closing that block. She is so quick and fierce as a blocker. Bertolino off hands. Second match point coming for Nebraska. Allie Batenhorst, can she finish it? No touch, third match point coming for Nebraska. Bergen Riley, one of the few times she's had to put up a bump set, but does it pretty well. And now John Cook will take a timeout here. This will be the third match point coming up for the Cornhuskers. Hey fans, you can stand for just a little bit longer. We're just going to talk it over real quick. Yeah. Resettle ourselves. A little reset. Georgia Tech in this third set has been so much better. So much better, and remember, a week ago in Gainesville, they were down by three in that fifth set. Backs against the wall, and they were able to respond and gut out a win. Do they have more in the tank here to be able to force a fourth set? They have saved two match points, looking to save a third now. Georgia Tech, a team making its fourth straight NCAA tournament appearance. They have two wins over top 10 teams for the first time ever. But still a hole to dig out of. Paola Pimentel.
Montel serving. It is Nebraska's third match point. Merritt Beeson. There's no place like Nebraska. 21 straight NCAA tournament wins for the Cornhuskers. to the round of eight for the first time since 2020.